Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Come on, let's give God a praise today. Let's join our voices together and exalt the God of our salvation. Amen. For he's worthy of praise today. He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be magnified. Hallelujah. Come join us now as we start worship today. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to your God. Hallelujah. We know that we have the victory because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. Hallelujah. So we're just going to lift up our Lord and Savior on this morning. Hallelujah. So sing with me. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won, you have won it all for me. And death, death could not hold you down. You are, you are the risen king, and you're seated in seated in majesty and you are you are the risen king sing by his stripes by his stripes we are healed we are healed by his nail pairs by his nail pairs hands we're free and by his blood, by his blood, we're washed clean. And now, now we have the victory. And the power of sin, and the power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame it all. He has won. He has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. It all. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won it all, you have won it all for me, and death, death could not hold you down, why you are, you are the risen king. And you're seated, seated in majesty. You are, you are the king. Let's sing by his stripes. By his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. By his nail pierced hands we're free. By his blood, by his blood, we're washed clean. Now we have the victory. Now we have the victory. And the power of sin, and the power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame it all. He has won our freedom. 
He has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. You have won it all for me. And death, death could not hold you down. No, death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down. No, death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down. And you are? You are the risen king. And you're seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You're seated in majesty, seated in majesty. He's seated in majesty, seated in majesty. You are, you are the risen king. Say, our God is risen. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won. He won the. And he reigns. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He's alive. He is alive. He's won. He's won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God, our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God, our God is risen. He is alive. He's won. He reigns on high. He's won the victory. He's won the victory. He reigns on high. He's won the victory. He reigns on high. He's won the victory. He's won the victory. He reigns on high. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your stripes, for your nail pairs hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We're standing here today, hallelujah, because you've won the victory. Hallelujah. By your blood, we're clean. Thank you, God, for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We win. We've won. We're healed. Hallelujah. Because of you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to you, God. Glory to you, God. Hallelujah. He's won the victory and he reigns on high. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Glory to you, God. Thank you, Lord. You reign. You reign, you reign, hallelujah. Thank you, God, thank you, God. Hallelujah, thank you, God. Glory to your God. Oh, God, and it's because of the amazing love of God, hallelujah, that he gave his only begotten son, hallelujah, for me, for you, for us, hallelujah. Glory to your God, hallelujah. Give him glory, yes, give him glory, hallelujah. You're worthy, God, hallelujah. Thank you, God. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, I'm accepted. 
You were condemned, and I'm alive. I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again. Let's sing that again. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted. I'm accepted. You were? You were condemned. I'm alive. I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again. It's amazing love, amazing love. How can it be that you, my king, would die for me? It's amazing love, amazing love. I know it's true, and it's my joy. And it's my joy to honor you in all, in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. And I'm accepted. I'm accepted. You were? You were condemned, and I'm alive, I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again. It's his amazing love, amazing love. How can it be that you, my king, that you, my king, would die for me? It's amazing love, amazing love. I know it's true, and it's my joy, and it's my joy to honor you. In all I do, I honor you. In all I do, in all I do, I honor you. You are, you are my King. Jesus, you, Jesus, you. Jesus, you, Jesus, you are my king. Yes, you, yes, you are my king. Jesus, you, Jesus, you are my king. Yes, you. Yes, you are my king. Amazing love, amazing love. How can it be that you, that you, my king, would die for me? Your amazing love, amazing love. I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I honor you in all I do, in all I do. I honor you. You are my king. You are my king. Jesus, you, Jesus, you are my king. Yes, you, 
Yes, you are my king. Jesus, you, Jesus, you are my king. Yes, you are my king. Jesus, you, Jesus, you are my king. Your amazing love, amazing love. How can it be that you, my king, that you, my king, would die for me? Your amazing love, amazing love. I know it's true, and it's my joy, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. God, we honor you. We honor you in all we do, in all we do. We honor you in all we do, in all we do. We honor you because you're our king. Jesus, you, you're my king. Yes, you, you're my king. Jesus, you, Jesus, you, you're my king. Yes, you. Yes, you are my king. Yes, you, yes, you are my before you, King Jesus. We exalt you, King Jesus. Huh? You are King, you are God, you are Lord. There's none other like you. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We exalt the King. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give you praise today. We exalt your name today. Ah, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, King. Hallelujah. We give glory to the King. All hail, King Jesus. All hail, Emmanuel. King of kings, Lord of lords, bright morning star. And throughout eternity, <laughs> we'll sing your praises and we'll reign with you throughout eternity. Hallelujah. All hail King Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you know this, but the King is coming. The King is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. The king is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's coming, y'all. Hallelujah. My God. 
So we bless him today. We're excited about our king. He's yet alive. Hallelujah. And he is well. And because he's well, I'm well. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. What amazing love he has for us. Hallelujah. How can it be that the king would die for me? <laughs> Hallelujah. And I know it's true. So it's my joy. It's my joy. It's my joy. It's my joy to honor you. Hallelujah. I take joy in giving God praise today. I take joy in giving God glory. I take joy in exalting the king. Hallelujah. So worship the king. He is here. <laughs> God. Hallelujah. We bless the king. And as a matter of fact, he's the king of kings. He's the king of kings. He's the king of kings, y'all. Holla. He is the most high God. The all wise God. Hallelujah. And he's and his reign is eternal. Hallelujah. And we honor him today. My God. We honor him today. So grateful to be a part of his kingdom today. My God. Hallelujah. He's an awesome king, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, what a great king we serve today. So glad to be a part of the kingdom today. Do we have any other kingdom citizens this morning? Amen. Amen. I declare he's my king. Hallelujah. And I'm glad to be in the kingdom today. Amen. Praise God. We just honor God today. Again, he's awesome. He's worthy of our praise, amen. So glad to be amongst God's people today. I'm so glad I'm not the only one in the kingdom. Hallelujah. My God, so we just give God praise today. We just thank God for his goodness. Has God been good to anybody here today? I mean, God is good, and he's good all the time. Amen. So we celebrate him for his goodness today. We celebrate him for his faithfulness. My God, but I'm grateful for his love today. It's the love that he says it's impossible for me to be separated from his love. There's nothing that can happen that can separate me from his love. Even when I don't feel loved, he loves me. Even when I behave unlovable, he still loves me. He loves me with an everlasting love. My, and I'm grateful for his love today. I'm grateful for God today. Amen. And I'm just, I'm just glad. I got the glad glass this morning. Because he woke me up this morning. <laughs> Started me on my way. We talked about it. Sunday. He didn't have to wake me up today, y'all. He didn't have to wake any of us up. And, and in spite of our where we are in our mind today, he woke you up. Whether you're in the kingdom or out of the kingdom, you're alive today because of his love and his grace and his mercy. Amen. And so we come to celebrate this season that we're in as we're approaching Easter, the resurrection of Christ. It's a point in time when one of the greatest works that was ever done was did.
Christ died for us, y'all. The king laid down his life for his subjects. And when we were yet without strength, Christ died for us. Amen. The Bible says that he loved us so much. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave up his only son for me. God gave up his only son for you. And that son willingly gave his life today. My God, so we celebrate him today as we as we enter the passion of Christ, the, the time that leads up to the death, burial, and resurrection of God, Amen. of our Lord and Savior. We just take these moments to remember all that he's done for us, all that he's accomplished. Oh, my God. Yo, his death accomplished some great things for us today, if you don't know it. His death brought us nigh to God. You know, we were sin had separated us from God. And when Christ died, what happened was that wall that separated us from God was taken down. And there was peace between oh God, peace was made between us. And so we're going to go to the word today, amen. We're going to find ourselves in Romans chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, how many know that this life that we live is by faith? Faith is so important to this walk that the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. It says that if you want to walk this faith, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is so important that the thing that helps us to overcome this world that we live in is we had this victory by faith. The victory that overcomes the world is even our faith. Faith is so important, y'all, because the faith that we have is based on a belief system that we have in who God is and what he's done for us. And if you don't believe that, what his death on the cross accomplished you can't receive what God has given us today. The new life that God has promised us is something that we have to receive by faith. This faith that we have in God is established on a promise that God has given us that, listen, we're, one day we're going to be like him. One day we're going to be with him, and when we join him, we're going to be like him. Oh, my God. This mortal body is going to put on immortality. This corrupted body is going to be made incorrupt. Oh, my God. And the life that we live is going to be eternal. Oh, my God. This is a promise that God gave us. And it's a word that we have to receive by faith. And to, and to verify the fact that he was going to do this, he gave us a gift. He said, just so you know that I'm coming back for you and that this stuff is going to happen, I'm going to give you a gift. Amen. And that gift was the Holy Spirit. Oh, God. He said, I'm going to leave something here to let you know I'm coming back. Yeah. Oh, God. And so he gave us the gift of the Spirit of God. He said, this faith that we have, we, because of this faith that we have, how many of y'all have faith today? I know we declare it's the now faith is, now faith, now, now. How many know you need faith now? Amen. Praise God for what you went through yesterday. I'm grateful that you've got to this point that you are today, but now you need faith that will be willing to be activated now. And so he says in Hebrews, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And he goes on to say that it was because of this, this faith, the elders gained an excellent report. He says that without it, you can't please God. Faith is, oh my God, y'all. Faith is necessary. And if you don't leave here with anything today, you need to go.
grab hold of the faith that you need to endure this life. Faith, y'all, it's, it's, it's about faith. It's by faith that we possess the promises of God. It's by faith that we stand today. You're standing by faith today. It's by believing that what I don't have yet, I don't have it, but I know I have it. I just haven't seen it yet. And because of my faith, it's, it's changed my vision. I, I start looking at the things which aren't seen because I know the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that I can't see are eternal. So even though I don't have it yet, it doesn't mean I don't have it. It just means that I haven't seen it manifested yet. And I'm saying hold on to your faith today because what you're waiting for to manifest is manifesting. Oh God. And you've got to be able to see that thing by faith. Do you see it? Faith has a vision, y'all. Faith has eyes. And if you don't see it yet, ask God to help you to see what he said. Listen, the enemy wants to blind you to what God is doing in your life. And he doesn't want you to believe that what God said is true is true. And so many times, y'all, as between receiving the promise and having the promise manifested, we experience something in the middle of those two points. It's called trouble. But know this, that your trouble has already been taken care of at the cross. Oh, God. You know, the death, the death of Christ conquered every work of the enemy. The trouble that you're going through has already been taken care of. But we just got to know that. We got to understand that. We got to see that. And your, your faith doesn't only have a vision, but it has a voice. Oh, God, y'all. And so as you go through what you're going through, y'all, let the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart be acceptable in his sight. In other words, say what God says. As you go through, say what God says. How do I say it? I say that by faith. Oh, God. I haven't gotten a promise yet, but I know God said something to me. And because he said it to you, you got authority to say it back to him. Oh, my God. Y'all, many times God can't do anything until you say something. I know you're thinking it, but some stuff is voice activated. You got to say something. The military, the military caught sight of this. He said, when you see something, say something. You're not getting healed because you don't see it yet. But when you see it, say it. I'm healed by his stripes. You got to put some voice to that faith today. So he says in God's sight, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us y'all we have peace with God when we have peace with God you can have the peace of God and I'm saying today that you may not have the peace of God because you don't have peace with God get at peace with God so you can have the peace of God. And that peace of God becomes a guard around your heart. Oh, my God. He said, and the peace of God will keep your heart and mind by Christ Jesus. He said, let the, oh, God. He said, let your request be made known to God. And that peace of God will guard your, oh, my God. Peace becomes a guard around your heart. 
You can't have the guard if you're not connected with the, the leader of the guard, <laughs> the captain of the Lord of hosts. When you're not at peace with him, then he can't release the peace in your life. There's a peace available to us because of what Christ did at his death. He said we have, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. Oh my God. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Because of our faith, oh God. Because of, our, because of your faith, Christ has brought you into a place of undeserved privileges. Oh, my God. Y'all, you've got to know that we've got privileges. The privileges that we have are not based on what we've done. It's based on who God is. It's really based on what Christ has done. So this, we have privileges, God. In other words, we have access. Oh, God. This privilege gives us access. It gives us access into the promises of God. It gives us access into this peace of God that we just, y'all, it, listen, it gives us access into the rest of God. Oh, God, I hear you. Y'all, there is a rest for you today. It's found, oh my, it's found based on the faith that you have. Some of y'all aren't at rest because your faith isn't where it needs to be. People, oh God, the people of, the children of Israel couldn't enter into the rest of God because of their lack of faith. And I'm saying to you, you're not entering into his rest because of your faith. There is a rest. There is a peace of God, y'all. But on the flip side, there is a rest of God. How many of y'all have ever received something and you said, where is the rest of this? <laughs> Where's the rest of it? You know there's more. And I'm letting you know today that there is a rest of God today. There's more available to you. You haven't received all the privileges that you're supposed to have. The enemy don't want you to know where the rest of it is. You happy with eating? Listen, some of us are at the bottom of the yacht, at the bottom of the cruise ship eating crackers when you're supposed to be sitting at the captain's table eating lobster. You don't know that there's a rest. <laughs> God. Yo, I love lobster. I like steak. <laughs> I don't mind a hot dog, but I like steak. <laughs> There's a rest, y'all. So we have undeserved privileges where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's. Are you joyfully looking to God today? Are you confidently expecting something from God? All that's connected to your faith today. And I believe God is trying to build our faith up. So we can rejoice too, verse 3, when we run into problems and trials. And we're going to go there too. It says we can rejoice also. How many know you're going to run into some troubles? You're going to run into some stuff. It's just part of life. And in your everyday walk, in your everyday run, you are going to run into some trouble. You're going to run into some problems. You're going to run into some trials. But there's something that you have to know. There's something that you need to understand. When We can rejoice, too, when we run into the problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. Oh, God. We don't like that word. Endurance. Endurance means the ability 
or strength to continue or last. When you go through a trouble or a trial, it's developing your ability or your strength to continue or last. And what happens, y'all? The enemy knows you're good for about one or two rounds, but come three or four, you're going to start to get tired. You're going to start, your legs is going to get tired. Oh, God. Your arms is going to get heavy. You're going to lose your, your wind. You don't have any more wind. Oh, God. You get fatigued. Endurance is the, despite fatigue, stress, or adverse conditions. That means you have the ability to stand despite being tired. Oh, God. Despite the stress, I can still endure this thing. Despite the adverse conditions, y'all, I can stand. And what I'm going through is building my ability to w maintain through fatigue, through stress, through adverse conditions. It's developing my patience, persistence. It's giving me guts to stand. Oh, y'all, some of y'all ain't got no guts. The enemy hates your guts, y'all. He hates your guts. He hates your ability to stand. Oh, God. He hates your ability to laugh in his face when you're going through. He hates the fact that even though I'm going through, praise is what I do. Even when I'm going through. God. That's endurance. Patience is the ability to go through, y'all, and not complain. It's the ability to go through and not cry. Oh, it's the ability to go through and not blame somebody else. Oh, my God, I hear you talking. Stop blaming other people for your problems. Yo, we got to mature to the point where we take responsibility for our own mess. I got to stop blaming Aretha for my problems. And she needs to stop blaming me for hers. <laughs> oh, my God. Patience allows you to endure trouble, trials without complaining, without giving up, without whining. It's the ability to hold up and to hold out. What you're going through is helping you develop these things. You know what? And endurance develops strength or character. Oh my God. When you develop some endurance, it affects your character. Oh God. It affects your strength of character. It, it gives you some experience. If your character is lack, oh my God. Maybe you're going through because you've got something wrong with your character that God is trying to work out of you or trying to work in you. And so your strength of character is developed when you go through. Y'all, I'm a witness. When you learn to trust God in the midst of your trials and troubles, when you learn to not complain and cry and blame and point fingers, when you start looking at the beam in your eye and stop looking at the moat in my eye, something happens that you don't know is happening. Oh, God. You're starting to be transformed into Christ-likeness. Your character is changing. When you ain't cussing somebody out every time they cut you off, something is happening. When you can allow your toe to be stepped on and you not smack somebody, God is working on you. He's teaching me how to hold my tongue when my tongue wants to talk. So I keep going through. As long as I keep responding, I'm going to keep going through. Oh, my God. As long as I keep saying something, somebody going to keep stepping on my toe. There's a strength of character that's being developed in us. The Bible says, watch this, Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Oh, my God. The king of glory developed character through the things that he suffered. Oh, my God. Oh, 
Jesus. God is working some things out in us, y'all. Our ability to endure and withstand this, these trials, this trouble, happened when he gave his life for us on the cross. Strength of character. Let's go to James 1. Our strength of character. And our character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Let's just talk about this a little bit more. We know it. James chapter 1. That's familiar. Or verse 2, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles or any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Oh, my God. You mean what I'm going through is not opposition, but it's an opportunity. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. That's what faith does, y'all. Faith changes the prescription in your glasses. Now when I see opposition, I see opportunity. Oh, my God. Now when I see a stumbling block, I see it as a stepping stone. Oh, my God. God is changing somebody's prescription today. He says, when troubles or any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Oh, my God. Listen, when you access that great joy, what comes as a result of great joy? Great strength. Oh, my God. The Bible says what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. So it only, it only is right to assume that with great joy, I'm going to gain some great strength. Actually, this joy becomes something that God uses. Oh, my God. He said, with joy shall I draw. <laughs> oh, God. If you need something in the, listen, the Bible says, with, great, with joy shall you draw from the wells of salvation. In other words, there's a well, oh, God, of salvation. If you understood that salvation meant healing, oh, God, that salvation meant wholeness. That salvation, salvation meant victory. The salvation supplied everything that you need is in that word salvation. If you understood that and you understood that with joy, I can draw what I need from that well. Then when I went through, I would do it with great joy. Because then I know I can use that joy to draw from the well where my help is. Woo! With joy shall you draw. Oh, not with complaining, but with joy. Oh, my. I, got, I need healing, so I need to get some joy. I need a breakthrough, but I got to get it with joy. I can't get it with complaining. Oh, God. I can't get it with backbiting. I can't get it being mean and nasty. I can't get it with a bad attitude. Ooh, God. I can't get it blaming somebody else. I got to get great joy. Oh my, I got to get great joy. And that joy starts to draw. Oh my. The joy starts to draw. <laughs> the joy has, oh my God. Yo. Built inside joy is its desire to draw. Oh God. Inherent is joy, is drawing. <laughs> oh, God. Joy draws strength from God. Oh, my God. Joy draws from salvation. It's drawing. My God. Tap into joy. And let joy do the drawing. <laughs> Woo! 
I don't know how it happens. I just know that joy starts to go in there and draw out the money that I need. <laughs> it draws my healing out. You need a breakthrough, get some joy. Joy will draw the hammer out. <laughs> God. And the breaker will start to. Mm, mm. My God, when you see trouble coming, oh my. Say yes. Because it's an opportunity for great joy. Woo! My God, y'all. And it gives you the opportunity to have a great victory. So you can give God great glory. Oh, my God. Ha. Ah. Change the way you see stuff. It's an opportunity for great joy. For you know that your faith is tested. Oh, God. Y'all, everything that we go through is not testing you. It's testing your faith. <laughs> I know we want to take it personal, but it's the testing of your faith. It's the testing of your faith. Do you believe what you say you believe? Is God who he said he is? Will he deliver you like he said he would? It's the testing of your faith. Whose report will you believe? His report says, I am filled. <laughs> it says, I'm healed. It says, I'm free. It says, victory. It's the testing of your faith. It's the testing of your faith. It's the testing of your faith. Your faith is being tried today. When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Oh, God. Your ability or strength to continue has a chance to grow. Your ability to endure despite fatigue has a chance to grow. Oh, God. Your persistence has a chance to grow. Your patience has a chance to grow. Oh, God. Again, inside of all those qualities is its desire to grow. If I, was a, if I keep my kids in baby shoes and their feet start to grow, <laughs> I'm restricting its, I'm restricting its, its desire to grow. Your feet want to get big. <laughs> you can't keep them baby. Sister Carrie, you have to take them baby shoes off Nathaniel. Not that you have them on them. You know what I'm saying. But endurance has to grow in us, y'all. Unfortunately, y'all, sometimes we just don't understand these principles. <laughs> God. Your endurance has to grow. So verse 4, so do what? So let it grow. Let it grow. Let it grow. Let it grow. Durance is saying, let me grow. Get me out of here. I want to grow. Let me grow. But we won't, it, we won't welcome trouble or these opportunities as opportunities for growth, we see them as they trying to keep me down. They trying to hold me back. No, endurance said, I'm trying to grow you up. Oh, God. 
Listen, as a child of the king, there's nothing. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. In other words, you can't stop me from doing nothing. Why? Because greater is he that's in me. <laughs> and that in, when you recognize that which is in you has unlimited power, has unlimited growth potential, oh my God, has unlimited growth potential, has unlimited earning potential. Oh God. Woo! You don't know what's in you has unlimited abilities, unlimited wisdom, unlimited knowledge, unlimited understanding, unlimited power. It's in you. Oh, God. If you're in him oh God, and he's in you, you had that in you. That was deposited in you because Jesus died. Oh, God. He said, I'm going to send something to you that's going to be in you. Oh, God. And this thing in you is going to transform you from a natural person to a supernatural person. God, let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, oh, God, you will be perfect and complete Oh, my God. When endurance accomplishes its goal, it'll perfect you. So you mean to tell me I've got to go through something to activate endurance in my life? But when I recognize endurance's job in my life, I'll have joy when I go through it. Because when he finishes his job, I'll be perfect. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all get that. What I heard is what happens, you know, is when we go through what's being had, our faith is being exercised. Oh, my God. And I'm being developed. And after I finish those reps, my biceps are going to be a little bigger. My pecs are going to stand up a little more. Oh, my God. I'm going to be fully developed. And there's some areas in your life that God is trying to fully develop. But you have to go through something so endurance can work in you, so then more endurance can finish his job, and I'll be perfect. Oh, God. Y'all, when you understand the process, you won't complain as much. Oh, God. Let's try to keep that complaining down to a, to a minimum. Unfortunately, y'all, y'all have just heard some, a secret. You just got a mystery. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, you just got a mystery. God speaks to us, y'all, in ways he does. The, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Why would, why would somebody use trouble to make me better? Just make me better. I ain't got to go through all of that. Just bam. It don't work like that, unfortunately. So God is trying to fully develop us, y'all. We're getting to that place of perfection. And all this was made available for what Christ did for us over 2,000 years ago. Where am I? Back to Romans, please. And because of all we've gone, we're on verse 4, and endurance develops strength of character. Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. That, that developed character helps us believe we're going to get what God promised us. That constant hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. Oh, God. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has 
given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So again, basically, that Holy Spirit empowers us so even though we're going through, we don't lose hope. Oh, God. Even though it's taking longer than I want it to, I don't lose hope. Even though Christ hasn't returned yet, I don't lose hope. Oh, God. Even though my kids ain't where I want them to be totally, I don't lose hope. Oh, God. Even though I'm going through some stuff, I don't lose hope. Even though you're going through today, y'all, don't lose hope. Understand the process. Oh, God. And God sheds his love abroad in our hearts, y'all. Love believes all. Oh, God. Love believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Love never fails. As a matter of fact, oh, God, faith can't work without it. Oh, God. He sheds his love in our heart to activate the faith. The Bible says faith worketh by love. Oh, God. If you're having troubles with your faith, you may be having troubles with your love. Oh, my God. Faith works by love. He sheds his love abroad in our hearts so we can walk by faith. <laughs> Because love believes, it hopes, it endures, it never fails. It covers the multitude. Oh, God, it covers sin. It's the bond of perfection. Love helps. <laughs> love holds me together when I can't hold it together. It fills our hearts. When we are, verse 6, when we were utterly hopeless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Oh, my God, y'all. Y'all, when I was out in the world, I wasn't looking for Christ, but he came to me at the right time. Y'all, I don't know what was waiting for me down the road. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know what my next step was going to be, but God knew something was coming my way, so he said, it's time. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. I don't know why I was in my 20, late 20s when he saved me, but it was just the right time. What am I saying? It's never too late for you. Christ came at just the right time when we were helpless have you ever been helpless and not known you was helpless <laughs> listen y'all if you don't have Christ you are helpless <laughs> Jesus and most miserable you know something I'm learning money don't make you happy you can have a pocket full you can have a bank account full and still be helpless. Oh, God. You can have as many men as you desire and still be helpless. You can have all the women Monday, one for Monday, one for Tuesday, one for Wednesday, one for Thursday, and still be helpless. My God. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> But you're helpless. If you don't have Christ, you're helpless. He came at just the right time. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, <laughs> though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. <laughs> oh, God. Yo, that's a tough, that's a tough one right there. But I thank God that I, I, ain't, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> he already did it, y'all. Most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. 
though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Oh, God. He died before the fact. He didn't wait for me to get good for him to die. He didn't wait for us to be right. He said, I'm going to die in advance. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen. He died because he knew, oh, God. <laughs> before the foundation of the world, God had chose you. So he knew you was coming. <laughs> he was there with, matter of fact, he was there when you got chosen. Oh my God, that's good. You were chosen before the founder. As a matter of fact, y'all, you weren't just chosen, but your purpose was established before you entered the earth. Oh my God. You came into the earth with a purpose. He said, Jeremiah, listen, before you was in your mama's womb, you was a prophet. Oh, God. Yeah, I called you to be a prophet. To many people, to the nations. I did that. Oh, God. Before you could even read, you was a prophet. Oh, God. I was preaching, y'all, before I knew what a preacher was. <laughs> before I knew Genesis and Revelation, I, I was preaching. God knew it. And he called me to be it. And he, God called you to be who you are before you are who you are. I'm saying there's purpose for your life. And if you haven't yet discovered it, Father, I ask that you reveal your purposes to your people. Oh, God, he's unfolding some stuff for you today. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ... He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Oh, my God. This is that hope we're talking about. That because of he did what he did, we can be confident that we're not going to be condemned with the world. We've been made right in God's sight by the blood of the blood, the blood, the blood has cleansed us has put us in right relationship with God, has put, positioned us to be with him. For since, oh God, for since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Oh my God, y'all. In other words, y'all, we had fellowship with the Father before we entered into the earth. Oh, my God. Sin came and our friendship was broken. Oh, God. Christ came to restore our friendship with God. <laughs> Jesus. He knew me before I knew me. We were in him in the beginning. Oh, my God. But when sin came, our friendship was disannulled. Our friendship was broken. Christ restored the friendship with his death. When we accepted Christ, we were brought back. We were friends again. Oh, God. Our relationship was reconciled. How many of y'all have friends you had broken fellowship with, but you got reconciled? Oh, God. Y'all, and even, oh, yes. And that's why he said he's given us what? The ministry of what? Because we've been reconciled. Now we've got the ministry to reconcile. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. But the enemy wants to keep us at odds with one another. 
He wants us to keep us going back and forth, y'all. And most of the time, it's about stupid stuff. But inside of you, oh God, inside of you is the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, God. Listen, you should want to reconcile. Something you should say, reconcile. I don't want to reconcile. Reconcile. <laughs> Reconcile. It's in you. He said, I've given you the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, my God. What's my ministry? I don't know, but I know I'm supposed to reconcile. <laughs> Woo! He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. It's bringing stuff back together. That's what peace is, is bringing stuff back together. It's tearing down the middle walls. It's tearing down the middle wall. Oh, my. It's tearing down the, oh, my. It's, te it's tearing down the middle walls. It's tearing down the middle walls. It's tearing down the middle walls. Oh, my. It's tearing down the middle walls. It's tearing down the middle walls. It's tearing down the middle walls. Oh, my God. It's tearing down the middle walls. It's tearing down the middle walls. It's stepping over the debris and say. <laughs> Extend your hand today. Extend your hand today. That's your ministry. <laughs> Listen, you got to, you know how you do it? You do it by faith. I ain't feeling you right now, but... <laughs> I don't like what you said, but we'll work it out later. <laughs> Let's just tear down the wall right now. Oh my God. Come on. I ain't letting you go. Until you bless me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God. Our ability to do that has come because what Christ did on the cross. Oh, my God. His death opened the door for us to reconcile and be reconciled. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. For since our friendship with God was restored by his death, of his son while we were still his enemy. Oh, God. We were still his enemy and he made us his friend. Oh, my God. That's what I'm saying. You can make your friend your. <laughs> What's the Bible say? Love your enemies. <laughs> Go, do good to them despitefully use you. Bless those that curse you. That's the ministry of reconciliation. That's what we're supposed to do. That's evidence that I have faith in him. Oh, my God. My God. So now we can rejoice <laughs> in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us Friends of God. <laughs> I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. My God. Hallelujah. Who am I <laughs> that you are mindful of me? <laughs> oh my God. God's my friend. Hallelujah. He calls me, he calls me friend. Hallelujah. Because of what Christ has done, 
in his death, he's reconciled back us back to God that now he calls us friends. <laughs> God. And you know something? What he says in the word is that, listen, I only tell my friends what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Woo! In other words, my friends get the inside. They're in the know. They get the inside trader information. I tell them my, oh my, my friends know my heart. Oh my God. So much happened at the cross where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. In other words, I put some new glasses on. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. All the obstacles. <laughs> it's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. I think I can make it now. <laughs> I think I can make it now. Hallelujah. God's done so much. Christ did so much for us, y'all, at the cross. Let's see what 1 Peter chapter 1, 5 and 7 says. Verse 5. First Peter. When we got it. Chapter 1, verse 5. This is the power of our faith. He said, listen to this. <laughs> oh God you gotta go back to three yeah I gotta go back it said all praise to God the father of our Lord Jesus Christ it is by his great mercy that we have been born again oh my God his death allowed us to be born again Because God raised Jesus from the dead, now we live with great expectation. Verse 4, and we have a priceless inheritance. Oh, my God, y'all. Right now, we have a priceless inheritance. In other words, y'all, that's the rest I'm talking about. We have an access all of our inheritance it's, there's no price that you can put on what God has given us it's a priceless inheritance an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay oh my God Woo! what God has for us y'all it can't be in touch by inflation a robber can't break in and steal it. Moths can't destroy this. Oh, my God. Jesus. He said, we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. Verse 5. And through your faith, my God, God is protecting, oh, my God, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. I'm telling you that you have to maintain your faith because your faith is protecting you. Mm. Your faith is protecting you. Your faith is, pro oh God. 
It's based on what you believe. It's based on who you believe. Your faith is protecting you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And because I know my faith is protecting me, I won't be surprised or, or excited when some strange thing happens to me as though it's some strange thing. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> Where is that scripture? <laughs> Is, what is it, 4 and 12? He says, don't, he said, don't think in strange concerning the fire, fiery trials that's going to try you as though some strange thing is happening to you. I thought that was Peter. Anyway, y'all know the scripture. You got it. Don't think it's strange, y'all. In other words, the, the new limit says, don't be surprised. <laughs> y'all, don't trip because something is coming at you. Don't think it's strange. But you got to know what? That my faith is protecting me. And why I know? Because watch this. He said, put up the shield of faith to protect you from all the fiery darts of the enemy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> take unto you the shield. Take unto you the shield of faith. In other words, you got you to gotta lay hold of that thing. Lay hold of that shield of faith, y'all. I'm just encouraging you to hold on to your faith today. Just to know that God has done something great for you. I'm coming to the stop sign, y'all, so I'm going to stop. But listen, God has done some awesome things for us today. He, he's getting us to a place, y'all. He's growing us up. And when you recognize what Christ has done for you on the cross, what his death did for you, it's, oh, God. I got to read that real quick. Colossians. I just got to read that. Colossians 2, 14 and 15, and then I'm done. Colossians 2, 14, it says, Ooh, go back to 13 please <laughs> he says you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away oh god then god gave you then god made you alive with christ for he forgave all our sins oh my god christ's work on the cross he he took our slate and said shh, 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 shh. I don't care what you did. I don't care when you did it. I don't care who you did it with. I don't care how many times you did Oh, my God. I don't care how many times you did it. I don't care what time you did it. Every sin, when you confess Christ, they go into the book and they start blotting them out. <laughs> uh. And the enemy wants to count that to you. Well, he did that. But he said, nope. Mm. He sealed the record. Oh, my God. You got a lawyer. You got the best lawyer in town, y'all. And you know something? He does everything pro bono. <laughs> Woo! He don't charge you $300 an hour. Listen, when you pick up the phone, the meter don't start running. <laughs> God. So you know what? Call him anytime. Call him anywhere. Call him for any reason. He's our advocate. <laughs> oh, my God. Where am I? 
He said, you were dead because of your sinful nature was not cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave us. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. He canceled the record. And if you go back, if you could go back to the cross, you'll see your sins on there. Oh, God. You'll see mine up there too. <laughs> he canceled them. He nailed them in the cross. And this way, Mike, when he did that, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. Oh, my God, y'all. In other words, he took away their ability to say, she did that, and, and he did that. And you remember when? He said, no good. He took the fire and pin out the gun. <laughs> God. You're shooting blanks now. In other words, you can just make a lot of noise. What is the, the judge said? Overruled. Well, don't you know he lied last week? Yep, but he put that under the blood. Overruled. Well, the, don't you know his mom and daddy, what they used? Overruled. It's under the blood. It's on the cross. He disarmed, oh my, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He took away their authority over your life. He took away their ability to condemn you for what you've done. <laughs> you go, sorry, bro, that ain't, no, ain't going to work. I've been acquitted. <laughs> God. I was guilty. I know I was guilty. Oh, God. I was guilty as sin. <laughs> you could have threw me under the bus. But Christ, <laughs> he went in there. He died. He came up. And they started, and I confessed him as mine. Well, how do I get this relation? If I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the son, that he died and rose, that he's my savior, my sin gets expunged. He disarmed spiritual rulers. He shamed them publicly. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> By his victory over them. On, I mean, he did it in wide open. He publicly shamed them. Listen, so everybody could see that these people is good. The principality has to know. He's, he's all right. You, you, the power has to know. The imps know. <laughs> God. He made a public spectacle of the principalities and the rulers and everything that's trying to come against you has already been taken care of. But you know some. What do they say? If you don't know the Lord, that doesn't mean you can't be affected by it. In other words, if you get caught speeding, you say, I didn't see the sign. That don't mean you, you still going to get a ticket. So if you don't know that your slate has been clean, you're going to expect to go like this when the time comes. Some of you think you're supposed to be in jail because of what you've done. No, you're not. I'm free. And whom the Son says free is free indeed, y'all. So we're free. we've been made free today by the cross of Christ, y'all. But I'm, hold on to the faith that God has given you, y'all. Develop that faith. Use that as a weapon. And know that what Christ did for you, you're fully equipped to overcome anything that comes against you God has blessed us y'all so be blessed today man we just thank God for his word today I pray that something somebody was encouraged today amen we're going to prepare to leave at this time um, if you have an offering that you'd like to leave you could bring it now if everybody's good we can stand and amen our
Our God is good, y'all. He wants us to know more about him. He wants us to know more about what we have in him and who we are in him. So let your faith be developed today. Amen. We just thank God for you today. Amen. Have a blessed week. Be encouraged this week. Amen. Come on, let's stand today. We're going to look to the Lord. Father, we thank you today again for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your word today, oh God. We thank you, God, that you're increasing, oh God, you're increasing our faith, ever increasing faith today, oh God. Father, you're strengthening us with might by your spirit in our inner man today, oh God. So, Father, as we stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, let us not be entangled again with the yokes of bondage, oh God. Help us to lay hold, oh God, of what you've done for us at the cross, oh God. Help us to stand fast in what you did at your death, oh God. Father, we thank you for your word today. Let us hide this word in our hearts today, oh God. Lord, let us receive it in good ground today, oh God. We don't want this stolen from us today, oh God, but we want it to produce fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, oh God, that you would get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We ask everything. And Father, as we leave today, I pray peace over your people today, oh God. Lord, I speak rest even now, oh God. I declare healing for every body, oh God. Healing for every bone today, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, let your people rest today, oh God, and receive their rest. My God, we thank you, God, for opening doors, oh God, for making ways today, oh God, for enlightenment, oh God, for opening our understanding today, oh God. We thank you for break-ins, break-outs, breakthroughs, break-ups, oh God. We thank you, God, that you're doing new things in us, oh God, and we're glad about it today, oh God. Father, let us leave today full of great joy, O oh God. Help us to access your joy today, O oh God. And Father, let us not leave here like we came. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Have a great week. Amen. Join us again on Christ's church page. Amen.